Begin tonight with an unimaginable unsolved murder that left several people dead decades ago. It was on June 6th of 1993. A man came into an Eastern Carolina grocery store, killed three people and assaulted three others. He got away with about $3,000. That was 30 years ago, but even after all this time, Windsor police and the SBI know very little about him. Meanwhile, families have tried to move on. Today, our investigative team is looking back at that day and the horror that unfolded. We're also learning more about what the FBI I believes was the motive behind those acts of violence, all in the hope of someday finding the man responsible. A warning first, though, this story does contain some graphic footage from that fateful day. This is um, my dad, mom. And then June 6th, 1993 is a day Jenny Cecil is still trying to forget. My brother came into the room and pretty much told me that dad wasn't coming home. It's the last day she saw her father, Grover Cecil, alive. He was killed while working at a grocery store in Bertie County. I still thought that no matter what, he was going to drive up. But after time, you learn to just kind of deal with it and understand and try to come to grips that, unfortunately, he's not. <laughs> The days, months, and years since then have been filled with few answers about who's responsible for the massacre at the Windsor below that day. At that time, no, I never would have considered anything like that happening. Rodney Hoggard was a corporal with Windsor Police at the time. Dwight Ransom, now retired, was with the State Bureau of Investigation. He was getting ready to work another assignment in the district. On my way there, I hear over the radio that the suspect has taken hostages. Once inside, he started to clear the building aisle by aisle. And so then the frustration sets in the realization that this person's on the run and you have all these victims right now. Right. Investigators would later learn the suspect had been hiding in the store waiting to strike. After employees closed up for the night, he took everyone to the back, tied them up and bound them however he could. What followed was brutal. He stacked them in piles of two, shot at four of them and sliced another's throat. Three died, two were seriously hurt, and one made it out without injury. The suspect left with about $3,000. All investigators had to work with were witness testimonies and this sketch based on what a witness remembered. In the years since then, investigators have followed leads, but they've all run cold. While working on this story, we learned something new. The FBI once thought that money motivated this attack, but now they believe something more sinister was in mind when he went into the store that fateful night. Harming people was his first motive. Robbery was his second motive. This Martin Community College Bertie campus building on South Granville Street in Windsor bears just some resemblance of the Below grocery store building that operated here 30 years ago. Those changes, though, they can't wipe away the horrific memories of what happened that day and family members and community members are left with leads that often run cold, many of them forced to find closure without answers. Cecil now only has photo albums and pictures to remind her of her father who was taken from her all those years ago. But she says she still feels his presence all the time. That's what gets me through. Just knowing he's, he's there to give me the support and the, the push and the, to take care of my mom and my siblings and just fight through my own battles. In terms of the suspect, investigators have looked into every lead from the possibility that he was an ex-police officer, like he told the victims, to the tip that he used to be a military member. No luck. There's still a $30,000 reward available to anyone with information that could lead to an arrest and conviction. If you know anything, call Windsor Police or the North Carolina SBI.